Ladies and gentlemen, the sun has now found its home in the western sky, and it is Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, home of the LSU Tigers, one of the great venues in college football. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see the number five team in the country, the Ole Miss Rebels, taking on the 13th ranked team in the land, the LSU Tigers. Glad to have you with us for EA Sports College Football. I'm Reese Davis, David Pollock, and Jesse Palmer with me in the booth. Guys, we are ready to tee it up. The Rebels will kick it away to start us off. And here's the return. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. The Tigers' offense takes the field to start this game off. These rivalry games can really get the blood pumping, and we'll see who can manage their emotions best early. Everyone's been waiting for this game, right? You know both of these teams have had this game circled all the way back to the beginning of the offseason, so you've got to be able to play under control. With passion, with energy, with hatred, because it's a rivalry game, but keep your emotions in check and making sure I'm controlling what I can control. After getting knocked back to open this drive, it's second and 12. Looking for a man, it's Nussmeyer. Finds a man on the left. Coming out, attacking from deep in their own end, and they're out at the 26 for the first down. Death Valley has a well-earned rep of being intimidating. It is nice to be the quarterback, to have everything on your side and have everything quiet. It's the loudest place by far that I ever played. I mean, for an entire game, they are on their feet, yelling, screaming. Now listen, we can't play all the words they're yelling, Reese, but they are an intimidating thing. Tackled immediately after the catch. Not difficult, not complicated, but early in the game, get in that rhythm. Find that timing to the wide receiver so you're set up for success. Then you go attack deep later on. Now here on second down, see if they keep tossing it around. He's looking to throw. Makes the grab, it's Thomas. And he surges up to the 36-yard line and they'll move the chain. Nice completion here to this wide receiver. And you're gonna see this receiver line up in different spots all over the field all game long. Defense has got to keep their eye on where this guy is because they know he's a big part of this offensive success. The give is to Williams. One step wrap, two step squeeze. This junior knows how to get him on the ground. I know you want to prepare for every game the same way, but there's just something different about rivalry games, Jesse. It's because, Reese, I think players are aware that games like this define your legacy as a player. Your record in rivalry games is something that people are going to talk about for years and years down the road. You have got to show up and play your best football in games like this. Well, that didn't bust for a long run. Now, third down becomes very manageable. It's not third in eternity. Now the whole playbook, short passing game, long passing game, all of it's available. Ball is at the 42-yard line, close to four down territory. Here's third and short. Looking downfield, it's Nussmeyer. Throws to the wideout. He's open on the right. He puts him in business across the 50 into the 46-yard line. It'll be first down. Simple call, excellent execution, moves the sticks on third down. These QBs and receivers, man, they run this route in practice thousands of times. So it's nice to see them come out here and execute it in game conditions. Great job with the timing. Great job with the depth and the route. Nice work between those two. They've got it inside the 30. They'll mark it at the 28. It's first down. The Bayou Bengals have been able to put on an aerial circus in recent years, but the foundation, the running game. Yeah, don't forget about the run game. That, that, that starts everything, right? Because if you can run it, you can throw it, you can create some bounds and keep defenses off guard. But I think LSU does a really good job of always establishing the run game first. 
Then they'll get to their playmakers and all the speed out wide. Listen, I know there are a lot of DBs out there that all they want to do is get interceptions and dance in the end zone. This dude likes to put his face in the fan, get close to the line of scrimmage, and tackle. And on the opening drive that he's out there, he gets a huge tackle for loss early. That is a statement play. Looking to throw on second down. Grab behind the line. It's Daniels. So much change of direction. He's down to the 23. I love offenses and quarterbacks that are willing to take the easy stuff. Take those easy throws that are guaranteed to get positive yards. Yeah, I'm going to take big shots down the field, too. But don't forget, it's easier to pick up second and five, third and five, than it is when we start getting those long yarded situations. A little pre-snap eye candy for the defense. Fires to the wideout. Makes a connection. And they make the connection, and he's got it at the 10-yard line, set up with a red zone opportunity. We asked earlier this week, who's your favorite receiver? And, of course, he said the open one. But we know who he really wants to go to on third down. The best one. <laughs> I mean, I think the open one, obviously, the politically correct answer. But you want to find the guy that you got that great chemistry with. You know exactly where he's going to be. You got that bond and that trust. You know, the one thing you can say about this defense, they pursue the football. The first guy might miss, the second guy might miss, but there's going to be more and more hats flying to the ball carry. You saw it on that play, getting a tackle for loss. Going to work in the red zone, they can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. Right back to it. Snowed under after a pickup of two. They'll mark it at the eight. Third and long, and they'll need to get it close to the goal line to convert. Dropping back, it's Nussmeyer. Snags it! Takes it to the house! Touchdown, Tigers! What a nice job by the offense. First drive of the game, they matriculated down the field, put themselves in a goal-to-go situation on third down. It's not going to be easy throwing it, but they win the matchup, accurate throw, and they get paid. Ready to try the point the after. Is on for the extra point. And the extra point is good, and it's 7-0. That is what they mean when they say ball control. A 14-play touchdown drive. And they finish things off with an 8-yard toss for the score. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. Here he comes from inside his own five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. The Rebels offense has the ball for the first time. And who says you can't find big-time tight ends anymore? Both of these teams certainly have. In modern college football, Reese, tight ends are becoming a bigger and bigger part of offenses. And what a treat today. We get two of the best in the nation. Yeah, going head-to-head, -head, catch for catch. Uh, I'd be interested to see which offense uses them differently and can find ways to maximize these guys' strengths because they're ballers. Guys, LSU has the lead here. Guys, let's have a look at the stats as we've played one period. They've swapped into the field, and we'll get it going in the second. This crowd trying to make life miserable for this offense. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. They can rely on this guy to pick up solid yardage when they need it, and he's out to the 43. Last time these two got together, it was a tight one, Jesse. Seems like every time these two teams play, the game just feels faster, right? Because it is a rivalry game. There's just a greater sense of urgency when we see these teams match up. Yeah, the fans feel it. They know it. There's so much to it. They think about it all year long. We can talk about the next game on the schedule. They're always looking forward to this one. And the Rebels brought to the ground, but not before picking up the first. 
And this is a guy that can find you the hidden yardage. That play, he just pushes the pile to get that first down. The offense setting up shop at the 46, first and 10. Give to the back. And a good, solid pickup before the defense cuts him down. I, I like it. Just frustrate the defense. Get that five to six yards. Make them honor the run. Make them know that you're willing to run the football and run it effectively. The Rebels headed quickly to the line. From the gun, they'll give it on the inside. And he'll be taken down, but he does have enough for the first down. And I don't care if I get it by 2, by 20, by 30, by 40. I just, I just want to get the first down, understanding the situation, understanding where the sticks are. Doesn't have to be sexy, but i got to make sure I get to that stick, get to the first down mark. And the Rebels have it with a first and 10. Off the RPO complete. Well, we knew coming into this game, this offense was going to try and get this receiver involved and get him involved early. So here they are just finding an easy completion. It's not a touchdown, but they just want to get this guy lathered up and get him into a room. And now on second down for this offense. To the air. It's dark. Shoots it to the left. Makes the grab. And he's brought down after a nice game. Really nice timing on that play. Receiver working against zone coverage on the perimeter. He's able to settle down, fight back to the football, and pick up the first. They've moved it to the 19, first and 10. Leaves it with the back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Offense trying to go with some misdirection in the run game to the boundary, but the defense was there. They're able to corral the back behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Lost yardage on that last one. It's second and 11. They'll ride the running back and leave it with him. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. How about the defender being a heat-seeking missile? He was on radar lock. He found the football and flew down with some bad intentions. This crowd going to try to make life miserable for these guys. On third and long, you'll have to turn it loose deep. He'll try to do it himself. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. What's well, a really nice job there on that third down, trying to get after this quarterback. And obviously, they're not able to make the play in the backfield, but really nice job pursuing. You see the athleticism and the speed they have, how they play as a unit together. Only giving up a little bit of a gain and now setting up fourth down. And it's no good. And they couldn't cut into the lead. It's still a seven-point game. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. Used to play fake, now to throw. Oh, what a spectacular layout and catch. We've reached the two-minute warning, and we'll see if the offense can build on this lead before the break. One big play, and now they've got it at the 42-yard line on first down. Back to throw, it's Nussmeyer. Pocket starts to collapse. And there was nowhere to go for this quarterback, and down he goes. They'll tell you that somebody's always going to pop open, but it didn't happen in time before they got the sack. No, it did not. And you know what? I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember zone defense. They didn't really have an answer. They weren't ready to get rid of the football. Quarterback hesitated. I got to him and got him on the ground. Might be a good call later on in the game. That is the last thing you want on first down as an offensive sack. Now it's second down. He's looking to throw. Got out of trouble, got rid of it. Finds his man, it's Lacey. They bring him down, but a solid pickup to put them in position to pick up a first down. 
I love the anticipation on that throw by the QB on the out route. You gotta throw it before the receiver comes out of his break. Nice work. That last completion still leaving them with a third down. From the gun, wants to pass. And they got him. They'll get him down for the sack. There's a timeout on the field. Tight game here late in the first half. Well, the offense trying to stay aggressive, right? You just came up with a huge play, and right away you go back to another pass. But you got to do a better job protecting your quarterback. Can't give up a sack there. Looking for a block. It's Watkins. And he's going to get it up to about the 29-yard line before he's brought down. Ole Miss ready to send the offense onto the field. This late in the half, you're behind. You'd love to create something before the break to build momentum, Jesse. But you've also had some miscues on offense, a big part of why you're losing the game right now. I'd take it into halftime, make my adjustments, and come out ready in the second half. Yeah, I'm going to take it into halftime too, Paul. But I'm trying to put some points up right here. Be aggressive, set the tone, be like, hey, listen, this is what you're going to get in the second half, so find something really quickly you can go to. Back to throw. It's dark. It's caught downfield. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. They'll line up right at the 48-yard line on first and 10. Looking to move it through the air. Got his man. And he's brought down after a nice game. He threw that one with some serious heat. This senior quarterback doesn't need a lot of space to get it in there. The Rebels come to the line with a new set of downs. To the air on first down. They're bringing heat. He just got rid of that one to save the down. Didn't see anything he liked. Running out of time here in the first half. They're going to have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. Dialing up a second down pass play. Quick completion on the out. And he'll make his way out of bounds after the solid pickup. And man coverage, when they get up in your face, they make things hard. You want to be able to attack the whole field and get them leaning in one direction and then break outside like you did there. Nice out route connection. Nice chemistry between quarterback and wide receiver. And as the first half draws near to a close, here comes the field goal unit. Oh, and the attempt is no good. After that miss, still a seven-point game, guys. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. Fellas, what an environment there today. All the animosity and flat-out hatred that comes with a good old-fashioned rivalry game on display in that first half. And I get it. A lot of coaches will say the difference between winning and losing comes down to stopping big plays and getting big plays. But if you ask me, it's more about how good you are on third down and how efficient you are in keeping drives alive. Those two stats can help you break the will of even the best defenses and help you come out on top. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. LSU ready to boot it away and open this second half. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Ole Miss offense ready to go back to work. After the lack of production in the first half, plenty to talk about. Let's see what they can dial up here in the third quarter. Yeah, I think you stay calm. I think you make adjustments, Jesse. I think you realize what they're doing to us and how can I attack that. But you also tell the guys, low-scoring game, still very much in this. We can still be who we are. It's a good point. I think on offense, this is not the time to reinvent the wheel. I think you stay true to who you are and what your identity is. And you've got to show confidence in your guys to go out and just execute better here in the second half. Leaves it with the running back. Sweet cut there. And he's able to shed one tackle and gets a pretty good pickup. 
And as an offensive coordinator, you don't need the perfect play with this guy as your running back. He's going to make the play perfect for you because he makes everybody miss. Spin moves, hurdles, stiff arms, speed, whatever it takes to move the sticks and score touchdowns. And the Rebels will hustle to the line. He'll keep it himself. And he's a real nowhere man tackled in this no-gain land. The offense thought they had a good look to run that play into with the QB, but there's just an example of a defender winning his one-on-one -on -one battle and making a tremendous play. Great effort by that guy. They've got it at the 41, third and short, trying to keep the chains moving. To the ground to try to pick up the first. They were all over him. Nowhere to go as that third down play turned into a disaster. And a great job by the linebacker. You can tell starting to crowd the line of scrimmage. Get up there in the line of scrimmage. See it. Diagnose it. Get in the backfield. Get the running back on the ground for the tackle for the loss. The Rebels will line up to punt it away. They'll look to pin him deep. On the move, it's Thomas. Everybody stays in their lanes well enough, and they stop him at the 31-yard line. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. It has been a complete uphill struggle for both of these offenses, Jesse. It sure has. At this point, David, someone's just going to have to step up and make a play. Someone's got to break a tackle, make an incredible catch, and just give some life to this offense. Hey, whatever you can, whatever it takes. Don't worry about looking pretty. That's out the window. We've already looked really, really ugly. we got to find something that works to put some points on the board. Here comes the option. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. Well, they try to go quarterback design run on that play, but the defense just not buying it. Nice job, everybody playing downhill and making a tackle close to the line of scrimmage. It'll take some work to get to the sticks. It's third and long from the 30. To throw, it's Nussmeyer. Unloads to the wideout. He makes a catch. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. It's all about critical downs and distances on defense. You want to be great unit defensively, you've got to be good on third down and in the red zone. For this defense giving up a third down like that, that is just a gut punch. LSU with the first and ten here. They'll give it to the back. A seven-yard pickup. It'll be second and three. You want to talk about making it easy for an offensive coordinator to hook up bunch of yards on first down make that second down really really manageable that's a great job by the offense they can really be aggressive after that last play it's second and three now the play fake looking to the big tight end and the pass is incomplete charge loose by the hit Hey, man, if you're going to force incompletions when the QB's thrown to the tight end, you better be physical. Nice job with the hit, forcing that incompletion. That last incomplete pass has him staring at a third and three. They'll try to drive ahead on third and short. And the defense finally makes the stop after the sweet run and good game. And that is just an attitude run, running it right up the middle, right into the teeth of that defense. LSU moving quickly, going to work again on first down. Caught in the backfield. It's Ingram. Open space of the 25. Touchdown, LSU! What a grab and go for the score. The quarterback's ability to read the field is huge. And also the anticipation, the timing. To be able to throw the football, Jesse, and hit a guy in stride so he can get run after the catch and get in the end zone, that was a nice job by the quarterback. Yeah, it's critical, David. Listen, a lot of times, touchdown passes aren't thrown into the end zone. You've got to read the coverage, hit the open guy, and let him do the rest.
Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And the extra point pushes the lead to 14. A 67-yard touchdown drive there. And they put the points on the board with that 37-yard touchdown pass. They're lining up to boot it away. On the run from inside his own five. Good job by the coverage unit to put a stop to that return. Ole Miss ready to send the offense onto the field. This is when the pressure can ramp up a little bit on an offense, David, when they start feeling the heat to answer a score. And I think being down 14, you can kind of feel that way. But, dude, if you put a good drive together, this is a seven-point game. So, Palmer, no need to panic. I was just going to say, David, I mean, this thing can flip quick. You go down, score, all of a sudden your defense gets a stop, or who knows, better yet, gets a turnover. This game is entirely different. They'll go right back to the run. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. They're trying to run the football. There's just nowhere to go for the ball carrier inside. He tried to bounce it to the outside. That linebacker way too fast. He met him there and forced the TFL. They've got them then deep in their own end, and this crowd trying to help keep them there. On third and long, he has to throw for it. Holds it in. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. Man, if I'm a defense, i got to find a way to get some more pressure on the quarterback or disrupt their timing and their rhythm. I can't give them these big chunk plays through the air. i got to be maybe a little bit more aggressive or do something a little bit different. Looking to pass. It's dark. Gets it out fast. And they'll drag him down. That's likely the last play of the third quarter. Guys, LSU has the lead here. And they've built a comfortable lead after three quarters of play. Let's take a look at how we've gotten here. One more quarter to go, and it looks as if we are ready to play. Second down coming up. The play action fake. Throws to the wideout. He's got it. I'll tell you, you cannot count this team out because of who's playing quarterback. When this guy's in the game, it's never over. Yeah, they're trailing here in the fourth quarter, but this dude can put up points quickly. And the Rebels in the hurry up. They'll try the right side. Just enough room to gain a couple down to the 34. How about the job by this defense today? They, they knew what they were getting into. A really good running back. We talked to him this week. It was the main focus point of this offense, stopping the run game, stopping the run game. Boy, have they showed up and showed out and answered that challenge. They move the tight end all over. Off the play fake. Buying some time. The quarterback scrambled around with the defense, able to scramble him and turn it into a sack. Well, the problem for this offense now late in the game, trailing by a bunch of points, is that the defense knows they're going to throw the football. And right now, offensively, they cannot protect the edge. You saw the speed coming from the outside. He was able to get to the quarterback for another negative play. Seventh play of the drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Wants to throw. It's dark. Firing to the right, complete. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. Well, and here's the problem offensively. Because you're trailing by so much so late in the game, the defense now is going to be playing big zone coverages, and they're going to allow you to throw the ball underneath in the middle of the field, rally to make a tackle, and bleed the clock. It's going to be hard now for this offense to claw their way back in this one. Good quickness to grab it off the bounce. And chunk plays are the name of the game, and they get one here before the defense finally makes a stop. The Rebels have it with a first and ten. Now 
They're in the red zone, and they'll pass it. Grabbed in the middle. It's Wells. They get it down to the seven on that pass play in prime position for a score. Well, this offense has not put their best product on the field today. They've got no points to show for any of their efforts so far, but they've still got a chance. But if it's going to happen, it has to happen now in this two-minute situation. This is where their playmakers need to step up. Back to the air one more time. Feeling some heat. And the pressure was too much. They get him at the 15. Just like to see the quarterback have a clock going off in his head, forcing him to get rid of that football. Can't take a sack on first down and goal to go situation and move your offense backwards. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. To the air. It's dark. Looking for the score. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Well, we wondered exactly where the momentum was, and it looks as if Uncle Mo might have switched sidelines and switched families. And momentum is such a big thing. It's such a real part of college football, isn't it? And you can just feel that right now just felt a few minutes ago like this game was over and all of a sudden this team they're believing in themselves they've got some win they've got some hope their defense now needs to get the football back to keep that momentum going Righty up to add another and after the extra point they cut the lead in half down 14 7 they put it in the end zone with a 12 play scoring drive and they finish it up with a 15-yard scoring toss. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. On the move from inside is five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. The Bayou Bengals will run the offense out onto the field. Okay, Jesse, this is a little bit of a tight spot. You'd love to be aggressive enough to get the first down, but you've got to take care of the ball first. No doubt. I was going to say, ball security is at a premium. You cannot turn the football over at this point. The defense has three timeouts left, David, so probably conservative play calling here. You're expecting them to try to run to ice this game. Conservative, I know they're going to be aggressive, but I also know that one first down ends this football game. You gotta believe they just want to run it, take care of the football, and keep that clock moving on second and nine. Smart move to keep it on the ground. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. Quick timeout call by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Big third down play here. If they get a stop, you'll see an immediate timeout. the tape the 20 he's at the 10 and he takes it all the way they couldn't stop him touchdown by you Bengals and you know late in the games offenses sometimes get conservative when they got the lead and they got the ball I love this offense they were aggressive they got another score added to the lead now you're trying to salt this game away Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point is true, and they have a two-touchdown lead, up 14 in the fourth. Quick strike offense on that replay scoring drive. And they put the points up with that 79-yard run to the end zone. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. He'll start the return inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Ole Miss offense ready to go back to work. They're going to open this drive with a pass. Complete to the left. 
Gets it to the 46-yard line. First down for this offense. Well, how about the offense setting that play up? We've seen earlier in the game a couple shorter throws. They're just trying to suck those safeties closer to the line of scrimmage, anticipating that they would get an opportunity to take a shot. They called the perfect play at the perfect time right there. They'll throw it on first down. He's taking a deep shot late in the game. He's got it down the left side. And the catch and run into the end zone. Touchdown, Rebels! Number nine. Yeah, and that's step one. Great job by this offense getting in the end zone. Now you got to go get the stop. you got to get the football back. you got to find a way to do something to create a turnover, get an onside to get the football back, to get back in this football game. He'll try to tack on one more. And with the extra point, they're down a touchdown, 21-14. That last drive didn't take long, just two plays to get it in. And they cover the final 54 yards with the explosive play in the passing game for six. Trailing by a touchdown here in the fourth, they'll try to get it back with the onside kick. He's able to grab the football, and the hands team gets the job done. LSU will dive into the playbook here on offense. This is everything you could hope for in a rivalry game like this. Close game, waning moments, history waiting to be made, guys. And it's moments like this why you come and play for these two schools, right? To play in a game like this, in a rivalry like this, in a situation, David, game on the line late, who's going to take it? And you know when you make this play, you're immortalized. With this kind of rivalry, these are the highlights they'll be showing for years. Everybody will be like, I remember when so-and-so made that play against our biggest rival to seal the deal. 